Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's gonna to be reviewing a 2024 Honda Odyssey Elite. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Stockton 12 Honda here in Utah for giving me some time with this van. I'm going to include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6 that goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 19 around town and then 28 on the highway with power outputs being 280 horsepower and then 262 pound feet of torque. Now, before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Now, taking a look at the hood, you guys can see distinctive lines there. It looks really cool. And I love the chrome here on the front as well. And then you guys can see with the lights, we do have LEDs here. And then notice the Honda badge. It also has some chrome on it. And then we do have some fog light action down below. And then we've got parking sensors at the bottom. And putting it all together, finished in sonic gray, this is such a cool looking minivan. Yep, I said it, cool looking minivan. Now around the side here, our tire wheel setup is 235, 55, 19 in the front and over in the rear. And you guys can see here with the wheels, you got the silver with the metallic gray. I think that's a really good look. And then look at the fender there. Notice the mirror cap is body painted. You got some silver there on the door handles and then also that window trim that kind of goes along. And then here is your full side view with the Odyssey. It has a cool flowing design because look at like how the window kind of ends there. I don't know, it looks cool. Now taking a look at the key fob, we have our lock and unlock function. We've got this to open up the doors, remote starts, the opening for the hatch, and then the Honda logo on the back. Now popping into said back, you guys can see we've got quite a bit of storage space down below. And look how fancy these floor mats look. But it, we've got even cubbies here as well. And the thing I love about these seats is notice how all of it is very nicely labeled, as you can see with what the strap does. So I think that that helps out uh, with using that function. And then when you're all done, just press that button and that will lower the hatch right back down. Now taking a look at the tail lights here, you guys can see kind of like the C shape and notice how it extends there onto the side. And then you've got that little like chrome strip that connects everything. And then look at the badges here at the bottom. And then notice this actually has the foot activation too, which is pretty cool. Putting it all together, let me know what you guys think about the looks here on the Odyssey Elite. Now taking a look at the seats here, you guys can see perforated all down the center. You got this really nice piping here on the side. And again, look, everything is nicely labeled with what it does. So it's it's foolproof, it really is. Now legroom back here is really good. We also have a little storage pocket, and then you guys can see some cup holder action. And look at all of the USBs if they'll pop up. There you go. And then we also have some vent action here, and then this is for the door, so we can press this to close it if we want. Now with the door closed, you can see we've got a sunshade here in the back and it looks like it would be padded, but it's actually not here on the door, which I do find kind of interesting that they made it look like premium materials when it's not. Um, and then you guys can see the window control here as well. Now another cool feature in the back is we have our own climate zone and then we actually have a little TV back here too. So there's just lots of features. Now in the third row, legroom is actually surprisingly good. I have my own vent back here. I got my own sunshade here in the back too. You guys can see some USB action and even for the headphones too. And then you can see we've got a hard touch here. Again, they make it look like they're stitching when there's not. That's so interesting. Um, but you got some cup holder action. And then headroom back here is actually really good. Now the seats don't look as nice as the second row seats, but they are still pretty comfy. Now taking a look at the front door panel, you guys can see soft touch here at the top and then look at the darker trim. And then you've got your memory seat function and then here's a quick look at the mirrors themselves. And then down below we've got all of our window controls here, door lock and unlock, the mirror adjustments, the mirrors do power fold in. And then look at all this trim here, really nice. And then tons of storage. And then here's a look at the front seat again with the piping and look at all the stitching as well. Power adjustments here on the side and you guys can see here for the doors and you can turn them off if you want and then for the hatch stability control and that's for the safety tech parking sensors and then your parking brake and you guys can see the brake holds down below now taking a look at the steering wheel itself soft touch all around we do have paddle shifters here on the back for that 10 speed automatic transmission we got adaptive cruise control with steering assist. We've got our heated steering wheel function. We've got some controls for the center stack, phone controls, voice command controls as well. And then you guys can see here with the stocks on the back. Now taking a look at the gauge cluster, you guys can see there's a bunch of different menus for us to 
scroll through here with the cluster itself to see different bits of info on the car and you guys can see also the RPMs. I think that looks cool how that is set up. Um, we do also have a snow mode and then we also have an econ mode as well. In reverse, we've got a backup camera with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel. Resolution is pretty solid. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system itself, overall response time is pretty good, as you can see. It does take a second for some of the pages to load up, but that was loud. Um, but it, it responds uh, pretty decently. And then you guys can see we've got analog controls for the climate system. Just down below, again, we've got a tri-zone climate system in this. And then we do have soft touch here on the dash, which I think kind of lens to the nice experience and then also down below as well and then I like that trim that goes across. Anyways, controls for our heated and cooled seats are right across there. Transmission selector is a bunch of buttons and everything and then that's our auto stop start and then your drive mode select and all of that and this is your Blu-ray player for the little TV in the back and then you guys can see some charging port action down below and then it's just kind of hollow there. We do have some cup holder action here and then you guys can see wireless phone charging pad and then big center console some USB action inside. And then while we're on topic of storage, there's your glove box. Now I almost forgot this does have the cabin talk as well as the cabin watch. So it does take a second to load up, but you got little camera so you can see what's happening and with the kiddos in the back. And then up top we get our controls here for the sunroof. You can see we've got a regular sunroof here at the top. So there's quite a bit of glare, so it's kind of hard to see, but 2024 Odyssey Elite, base MSRP 49,970. Total MSRP after all options, $51,800. Do, 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 do. Let's see how it drives. Let's talk about visibility here. You guys can see visibility over the hood, both of the mirrors throughout the rest of the rear and this is going to be an interesting uh, test drive so yeah we'll just go with that um <laughs> first off seat comfort in the odyssey is actually really good i think that's something that i am pretty impressed with and on top of that <whistles> yay yeah steering's fine this will be our little racetrack here No, not the best acceleration on the planet, but the V6, it's got pretty good power. The 10 speed's smooth. And I've, I've driven quite a few Odysseys over the years and they haven't really changed it all that much. But yeah, I can tell you like the transmission's really smooth and the V6 is great. Um, and the good thing about this V6 too is it's reliable. Honda's 3.5 liter V6 is a good engine. Also so weird to see that kind of makes you a little bit queasy because the van, because everything's moving around it, but that's stationary. Kind of reminds me of like that, uh, that show Cash Cab. Kind of reminds me of that. That's weird, weird reference. Um, but anyways, yeah, it's comfortable, it drives well. So I, again, I've, I've driven a bunch of Odysseys. Um, here's kind of my thoughts on the Elite and just the Odyssey in general. So Toyota Sienna, um, hybrid four cylinder. You know, Toyota's hybrids are good, but for me personally, I'd rather have a V6 than a four-cylinder. That's just me. Because the, the Sienna gets good fuel economy, but it's like, well, whatever. Um, and then Chrysler Pacifica. The big downside with that is going to be the fact that it's just, it's a Chrysler. It's, they're not, they're not really known for their reliability. So there's your kind of little issue there. Um, and then that leaves you with, what, the Kia Carnival. Um, now that's got a v6 that's kind of the most similar to the odyssey in terms of its setup but then they kind of go for more of a luxury thing um but you know just look up the uh key is lighting on fire and then i, I and then and then you can uh, tell me if you want if you want to buy a uh key key a minivan um at the end of the day but so the point that i'm trying to make here is i think the odyssey has you know reliability like toyota but it still has a v6 unlike toyota and yeah i think that's decent features all that kind of stuff it's it's a good van um overall i'm not sure if i'd go for the elite package because you know I've, i feel like you get a better value with some of the other packages but again the odyssey pricing isn't like that big of a gap between you know base model and fully loaded so it's also kind of tempting to just go for the fully loaded because like you might as well just get all the options i don't know let me know what you guys think on that um, let me know what you guys think about the odyssey elite and let me know if you like this more than the sienna and the odyssey and Pacifica. I think that this one, I, I'd say probably, I like the 
I don't know why I said Odyssey. I meant Carnival. Anyways, I think I like the Carnival the most in terms of like the luxury feel. The Pacifica is nice, but it, some parts of it I just don't like too much. And then I think I like this one in terms of like the build quality and reliability feel. But let me know your thoughts.